I'm so proud of them both. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, so distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Today has the potential to be one of the most important days in the lives of millions of young people, even though they will never know us and we shall likely never meet them. At the core of human motivation is that tomorrow can be better than today. People will fight oppressors, combat unending perils, unite through unparalleled adversity, all in the hope that tomorrow can be better than today. But how does it feel to believe that tomorrow cannot be better than today? Well, there is an entire generation of young people in many parts of the world, including the Western world, who are living more off their memories of yesterday than their hopes for tomorrow. If an entire generation of young is robbed of this priceless and renewable feeling, where does that leave our collective future? After all, 50% of the world's 7 billion population is under the age of 30. In too many places and for too many young people, their daily experience is about disempowerment. It is over-controlling, which can impose a, a ceiling on progress. It is withholding information and not educating. It is removing responsibility, and even more, it is preventing people from thinking and doing for themselves. The poison tentacles of seduction from extremist political parties and terrorist groups only have resonance in the minds of the young when they are burdened by a lack of education, direction, and hope. A disempowered youth. These empty, vacuous promises of progress from the mouths of madmen feed off disenchanted and disenfranchised youth. Just look at the events in Kenya last week. So the seeds of terrorism are far more easily sown in the minds of the disempowered, controlled, and hopeless than those who can hope to be educated, hope to be able to provide from their families, and hope for a better tomorrow. To he or she who feels that they have nothing to lose, senseless acts can make sense. Now, the internet has democratized information. The threshold of expectation of happiness and contentment has increased. No longer do the great majority of people in this world live in an information vacuum. People see more of what they do not have. Expectations have risen faster than social and economic progress. And social and economic progress needs to catch up. Too many people live in places where the opportunities are not there or denied them. 500 million young people living on less than $2 a day shames us all. And the antidote to hopelessness is socioeconomic progress. It is cementing the belief in people's minds that tomorrow can be better than today. And that's where you come in. For today, we will talk about some of the big issues for youth. Jobs, education, financial inclusion, entrepreneurship. We will see how some of the best P3s are making a substantive difference. Now, at the end of the day, my experience has been that rendering responsibility nurtures maturity. You cannot grow if you're not made responsible. The Libra Group has been built on empowerment, and mostly by young people at that. We always believed in giving people opportunities based on potential and personality, not just experience. What can you be, not what have you been? We have people who were trained in shipping from London, who are now building hotels in South America, others buying property in the States, and even energy plants in Europe. Making people responsible and accountable pays dividends. When people are empowered, the feeling of responsibility is much higher than if they're controlled. 
Uncertainty begets uncertainty. And I have seen firsthand the importance of helping, be, helping people be part of the solution instead of mired in the hopelessness of the problem. Our internship program helps young students from Greece and the States see what is possible with a dynamic global mindset. Our Entrepreneurship Award has sparked hope and encouragement in Greece, a country starved of both. They are both examples of empowering young people. Now, we should never regard youth as a disadvantage. Instead, we should treasure the idealism of youth and tap into its creativity and energy. For young people's energy is infectious. All we need to do is burden them with opportunity and get them to believe in themselves most of all. Now, as someone who came from Europe to America, I have seen how powerful real empowerment can be. The US is the great example of empowerment, and just look at the results. Here, you are encouraged to achieve your potential, to lose your fear of failure. Henry Ford, Walt Disney, H.J. Hines, what do these men have in common? American icons, yes. Titans of business, of course. And they all had the great good fortune to live in America where they could build great and enduring companies. But they also had something else in common. They all failed. Each of them went bankrupt before succeeding. Then they got up and started again. So empowerment is as much about belief as it is about opportunity. And it is through self-belief that we can encourage the young to exceed their and our expectations. That is the real empowerment. The consequences of controlling our young are far more prescient than we would think. How can they live tomorrow with wisdom and vision if they are controlled today by a ceiling of fear or impotence? How can confidence be developed if they have no opportunity to be made responsible? Now, in order to sever the cycle of cynicism that is prevalent in many places, it requires concrete effort. And this is where P3s come in. Through combining the agility of the private sector with the outreach and voice of the public sector, you can all help. From those of you running global companies who can create internship, entrepreneurship, and other such programs for the young, to those of you who should lobby policymakers to remind them of the trouble to come if the subject is not adequately confronted, to simply encouraging your children to believe in themselves. Now, there is no immediacy with excellence, but we should aim for it always. Now, today, you can all be philanthropists. And I'm not talking about putting your hand in your pocket and bringing out your checkbook philanthropy. I am talking about philanthropy in the most profound meaning of the word. The word was coined by the playwright Aeschylus, who used it to describe Prometheus when he gave two gifts to mankind, fire and hope. Important and very relevant to us today. For fire symbolizes culture, science, and technology, all the tools that mankind needs and uses. And that is the first part of the solutions to the problems that we're going to talk about today. And then there is hope. This is the second. Hope is the simple belief that we can make things better. So the real meaning of philanthropy is gifting to people the tools to create a great civilization and then giving them the confidence to try to build one. Equipping young people with what they need to do great things and then giving them the belief to build a better tomorrow. I cannot think of a better description of the word empowerment. So I say, congratulations to Concordia, whose authority makes today possible. And congratulations to all of you attending today. Now, as I look around the room today, I see a gathering of leaders, 
and people of great influence from all corners of the world. Yet we all share a common bond. That common bond helped us to make us who we are and get us to where we are. Someone gave you a chance. Someone believed in you. And it made all the difference. So I have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. We all have a responsibility to give back what we were given. That makes a good day. And to do good is to feel good. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all fire and hope. Thank you.